Hello, my name is Dino Hoss, and today we are going to be looking at partnership accounts and the layout of the appropriation account and the capital accounts. The first thing to outline is that it's expected that you do know the advantages of running a partnership as well as the disadvantages. Obviously, a sole trader may decide to take on a partner, in which case it's going to enable them to raise more money or more capital. Uh, it might uh, enable them to specialize in different areas which uh, they are good at. So for example, as a sole trader, you'd have to do everything yourself. So you'd have to be multi-skilled, you know, be good at marketing and finance. Whereas if you take on between two and 20 partners, each partner can specialize in an area that they are an expert in. So you might have someone with a finance degree who does the accounts, someone who's got a um, master's or a, a bachelor of education in marketing might decide to be in charge of the marketing department. Um, also, the more people you have, the more ideas you're likely to have, which would help to hopefully improve the company. And unlike a sole trader who has to stop things when they decide to take a break, with a partnership, you can rotate around and um, different partners can take different holidays or have different breaks at different times. Also, it's easier to cover for illness. If one partner's ill, the other partners can step in and help. The disadvantages of a partnership are that you now have to share the profits. When you're on your own as a sole trader, you get to keep all the profits. Whilst a partnership will generate more ideas, um, it could also create more arguments because everyone believes their idea is the correct one. So that's an issue uh, that could be considered to be a disadvantage. And partners usually are not allowed to act on big decisions independently. So they have to all agree before they can actually uh, go ahead and move on major decisions. Um, obviously, that takes a lot of time and time is money in business and that could be considered also to be um, a disadvantage of a partnership. So in accounting, um, we um, would always encourage the, uh, the owners of a business to take out what's known as a partnership agreement because unless we have um, in writing um, an agreement between the partners in terms of how they're going to divide up their profits, who's going to get paid a salary for actually working in the company, and uh, any penalties for drawing money out of the business, then we have to, in the UK, refer back to a very old act or law from 1890, which says that in the absence of a partnership agreement, so where the partners have decided not uh, to legally write a contract between uh, themselves, then all partners are considered to have uh, contributed an equal amount of capital to start the company. Partners are not entitled to an interest on their capital or um, they're not allowed to be paid a salary and there would be no interest on drawings and any profits and losses would always be shared equally. So basically what the law says is if you haven't been wise enough as a partnership to um, make a partnership agreement then we're going to divide everything up equally because we'll assume that everyone's put in the same amount because we know no different. Um, so I know some of you may at this stage be thinking, well, what do they mean by interest on drawings and interest on capital? But what you have to remember is that a partnership is very, very different to a sole trader because with a sole trader, you are the business. Everything you do is down to you. With a partnership, if you draw money out, you're effectively taking a part of someone else's money. So imagine you had a dollar bill. If you take 60 cents out as a drawing and you've only contributed 30 cents, then the other 30 cents actually belongs to one of your partners or to a group of partners that are in partnership with you in the company. So to disencourage, to stop people drawing money out that doesn't actually belong to them in a partnership, we usually charge an interest on any drawings. So it's kind of like saying, OK, if you want to draw money out, you're going to have to pay a penalty. And that will be an interest that you pay back into the partnership for every pound or dollar that you take out as a drawing. Also, in a deed of partnership, uh, you will get some silent partners or sometimes known as sleeping partners. 
they're not going to get paid a salary because they're not actually working or using their time in the company. If you've got some partners who are actually spending time organising, making decisions in the business, it is right and proper to pay them a salary. And so again, how much they get paid would be written into the partnership agreement. And then, of course, the most obvious one. When you make a profit, hopefully, how is it going to be divided? Is it 50-50? Is it going to be 60-40? Usually, that's done according to how much capital that's been invested. So say one partner put in 60% and the other one put in 40%, then, of course, you would divide the profit 60-40. So in a partnership, you are going to draw up the income statement. So that's the trading account, which tells you your gross profit and your profit and loss account, which works out your net profit in exactly the same way as you would do a sole trader. There is no different. But you are going to add to your trading and profit and loss account or your income statement, an extra part known as an appropriation account. And an appropriation simply means a division. So how is this net profit of 20,000 going to be divided between the partners? Of course, that would be written in your partnership agreement. So here we can see we've got Abrahams and Peterson and um, both Abrahams and Peterson have drawn money out of the business. And if you remember, of course, there would be a penalty and interest for doing that. So Abrahams has to pay back in $2,000 uh, in interest. And Peterson has to pay 3000 Because they're paying that as a penalty, that actually gets added to the net profit that you've made of 20000 So when you add that and the 5,000, then this business is now going to appropriate or divide $25,000. How's it divided? Well, again, this would all be given to you in the question as to exactly how it's going to be apportioned or divided up. The interest that we pay uh, the investors on the capital that they've actually put into the company, in this case, it's usually given to you as a percentage, but um, that percentage then enables you to work out the dollar value. So when we work that out, we see that Abraham's is going to be paid $4,000 as interest on his capital, and Peterson would be paid 2000 One assumes there uh, that that would be the division of the amount of capital they've invested. So presumably Abraham's has invested $4 for every $2 that Peterson has invested. So that's why Abraham's would get double the amount of interest on the capital that they've put in. And again, that's fair. If you put in more money, you should be rewarded with more interest on the amount that you've invested. Uh, Abraham's clearly uh, worked in the company while Peterson was uh, a silent or sleeping partner. So Abraham's would also get $9,000 reward as a salary for uh, the time they spent uh, making decisions for the partnership. So we start with $25,000, uh, and then we have to make these payments, the 6000 and the 9000 which total 15000 and they eat away from that $25,000 figure. So when you take away the fifteen from the twenty-five, you're left with $10,000, and then that $10,000 gets divided up um, according to how the deed of partnership has been agreed in terms of the share of profit. So Abrahams and Peterson in their deed of partnership have clearly agreed that they're going to divide it 50-50, which again would be given to you in the question. So that 10,000 that's remaining after you've paid the interest on capital and salaries gets divided 50-50, so both get 5,000. And in your appropriation account, you should always end up with this figure here, the 10,000, equaling the amount left after you've made the payments on the interest on capital and salaries. Now, as discussed earlier, any um, profits in a sole trader account um, basically belong to that one owner. But in a partnership, um, you're going to have different amounts according to how much interest they've been paid on their capital, how much interest they've had to pay on drawings, how much they've paid um, or they've been paid as a salary. And so every uh, partner will be owed a different amount according to the amount they've invested or the amount they've worked within the partnership. So in uh, partnerships, we draw up a special type of account known as a current account. 
And what does the current account do? It just simply tells you at a point in time how much the business actually owes each of the partners. Okay, And that's why the balance brought down always ends up on the credit side because it's kind of like we owe this, like we would owe a creditor. Uh, we owe, in this case, the partner Abrahams. Um, we owe him $17,000 in this case. Um, when I say we, obviously, I mean the business owes him $17,000. Um, so at the end of each year, you'll have a balance carried down, and that will be taken to the beginning of next year to show the partner how much they're owed by the company. So if Abrahams, in this case, was to leave today, the company would give him back the original amount of capital that he invested plus $17,000 that he has made during um, his time at the company as one of the partners. Um, essentially, all the good things, all the good stuff that he makes gets added on the credit side because that's the amount that's going to be um, owed to him at the end. And all the things he has to pay end up on the debit side. And then you have a balance carried down normally on the debit and a bought down on the credit. Now sometimes, especially if the partner's drawn a lot of money out, you may have a balance carried down on the credit side and a bought down on the debit. But more often than not, the balance carried down and bought down will uh, be on the debit and credit side. It will only be a case uh, where it's on the opposite side if the partner in a way has been a little bit naughty and drawn out more money uh, than the partnership owes them. Okay, so if we go back to how we construct it, then anything, as I said, that is adding to the amount that the company owes Abrahams, in this case, the partner. And remember, each partner will have his own or her own current account um, gets put on the credit side. So you'll have the balance from last year and the beginning of this year. So uh, Abrahams was owed 6000 at the beginning of the year. And then... He was paid $4,000 in interest. He got a salary of 9000 His share of the profit was 5000 And also, he le obviously lent the company some money. And that is also the interest on that loan, which would be shown in your profit and loss account, is also something the company owes Abrahams in this case. So if you added all that side together, you'd have $27,000. But you have to take away which would happen by making a debit entry on the current account. Any drawings that Abrahams has taken out, which in this case is 8,000. And if you remember the penalty for removing money that could be used uh, as capital to make even more profit is in this case, the interest charge on drawings, uh, and that is 2,000. So 27,000 was owed to Abrahams, but he drew out 8,000 and had to pay an interest of $2,000 on those drawings. So in total, obviously the balance carried down would be 17,000 and bought down to next year would also be on the 1st of January on the credit side, a balance bought down of 17,000, which owes, um, uh, which is owed to um, Abrahams in this case.